Okay, Shago. Yeah. What a day to be an Arsenal fan. Of course, do you saw this call line coming? 5 0 to the Arsenal against Crystal Palace. What a London derby that was. Well, um, to be honest, I didn't see the 5 0 coming. Um, is it a day to be proud to be an Arsenal fan? I wouldn't say yes. And I have my reasons for not saying yes because Crystal Palace are not really like a good side. So if we can beat them 5 0. I think um, that means we have a huge problem at hand. Crystal Palace won Chelsea this season. Chelsea, everybody's winning Chelsea. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Chelsea is shit. So mm. now nah, you can use Crystal Palace win Chelsea mm. to, to, uh, to say that, um, that. And mind you, we are lucky mm -hmm. Ulisse didn't play. Mm. Mind you, because yeah. we have Zinchenko mm -hmm. that will have let him go free. Mm. So let's just keep that in pocket. Yeah. Mm. Who are your standing players today? Oh, my Arsenal only players today, I think I'll give it to the defence line. Um, Gabriel, Magalhaes and Saliba. Um, very good, I think. Um, but man of the match for me, I think, uh, is still Gabriel Magalhaes because um, for the first goal was very, very important and he did it like in style. And then the second goal, yeah, I gave it to him as well. So I think, and for a defender that has been scoring against Liverpool, and then today again made a big statement to our striker, mm -hmm. then uh, you have to give him a big up to him. Because he's like, um, he's commanding from the fence and he's like, oh, look, you attackers, this is what you need to be doing. And he's doing it, he's teaching them the rope. So, yeah, for today's game, yeah, big up to him. Yeah. Do you think the mentality of uh, the lads are back now? You know, going to uh, Dubai to go train. Uh, do you think <laughs> the mentality is back for them to, you know, power through to the end of the season? Oh man, the mentality, I think, yeah, Habibi did some nice things <laughs> there. But um, if you ask me about the mentality, I think um, the only person I saw a shift in his mentality today was Gabriel Martinelli. Um, and I think maybe that was because he was benched and he, he coming up and then showing us some nice finish with some nice finesse, mm. like was um, something very good. Mm. Um, the now the season is, a very, very, is very, very long, mind you. We have some very, very dicey game um, this season. We're going to sports um, away. We're going to um, Etihad. We're going to Onana at 50. <laughs> we're, going to, <laughs> we're going to Manchester United. And mind you, Liverpool is coming here in a few days. So there's some uh, a run of game. And by the way, Chelsea is also coming here. Mm -hmm. So it's not like uh, we, we can't rule Chelsea out because we drew there. We were almost losing the other day. Mm -hmm. And we have West Ham as, at hand and Aston Villa. So it's a very long season that right now you can say if the mentality is back. I think um, we need a little bit of strengthening in some position mm -hmm. before we can ad admit that, okay, we're back in terms of mentality. Do you, do you want Arsenal to sign a striker this January? If yes, who would it be? Um, if yes, if we were to sign a striker, honestly, I would go for Ivan Tony because he's been somebody that's been in the English league that is the Premier League and also like um, lower leagues mm. and he looks like a, a very rugged and someone that understands what he need, means to be a striker mm. so I'll go for Ivan Tony. Mm. but mind you we cannot we may not be able to get Ivan Tony for 100 million mm. in January mm. uh, because we need to offload some players and the Benzema as well would be another option on a loan and then the issue I think with the Benzema loan right now is um, the fee the, uh, the, uh, the, the salary, the wages, like how is it going to be structured? Can we pay that for January um, loan of Benzema? But I really think we need a striker. Mm. Yeah. Of course. Looking at the likes of Manchester City, Liverpool, can they sleep? I think um, Liverpool can sleep, but I hate Manchester City. Mm. They look like a team that may not sleep. Especially with Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, no. Like, I don't just like that brother back. <laughs> well, because um, you saw the way he came against Newcastle. They were already losing that game. And then he just came. The first goal. Uh, the, the goal. And then the pass. And you could see, like, he was like... Most of the time, I was telling players, we need to keep the mentality. And you saw the quality he has. So, yeah. With that kind of a player in your team, you're sure you can go far in winning something. And by the way, Haaland has been... Uh, now they're going to have, most likely have um, De Bruyne back mm -hmm. and Haaland. So how can we compete? Yeah, people want to argue we have Odegaard. We've been creating chances and we have Odegaard. But 
we've not been finishing up our chances. So that is why you can say if um, can Manchester City sleep. I think it's a very, very... They may sleep, but I don't think they are in that position. Liverpool, obviously, I think um, it depends on what they do in January for Liverpool because they have been a team that have always not been consistent in all their games. So Liverpool can sleep, but Manchester City, uh, I, I really doubt. Yeah. Looking at Arsenal at this point, has David Raya, has he justify his number one shirt as the goalkeeper ahead of uh, Aaron Ramsdale? With, 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 with just that throw today. With just that one throw today, I no, think no. no. With his performance, no. Like over the no, he hasn't. So because if you ask me, um, I know people want to point out the performance for the uh, is it the fourth goal also. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it was a good um, throw. But um, mind you, uh, if you want to say he justified it, has he done any better than what uh, Ramsdale did last season? Ramsdale kept us in some of the games last season, mind you. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I think there was a very nice save against uh, Liverpool. One again at um, against Pauls and the rest. So as Raya made, I think Raya made only one spectacular save this season, and others have just been like he's been like very shaky. So I don't think um, he justified it. And now this is me. I think both of them are not like good, good goalkeeper, but it's just like which of the bad goalkeeper is better. That if you ask me, mm. <laughs> that's just a question. If you ask me, because I would still rather st stick to Ramsdale because. If you want to say, um, was Raya an upgrade to Ramdell? I don't think so. Mm. Because, yeah, I know at the beginning of the season, I was part of the people that was like, oh, supporting um, Raya. But look at some of this performance. Mm. Like, there were some goals, like, especially games in, uh, in Newcastle. The controversy around the goal was what took away the fault from Raya. But if you, if you put in that, if you take away the controversy, as Raya had been a good goalkeeper, there were so many things he could have done. There was this um, goal as well that uh, the own goal, mm -hmm. like just you could just look at so many things and then look at okay, is this been an upgrade from uh, Ramsdale, which is like obviously no. What can I say about the performance of Saka this season? So people say he's been quiet. Saka has not been quiet. If you ask me, my honest opinion is, do we have a backup for Saka? Saka has been the only player so far that has played almost all our games. If he's not playing, he's on the bench. But if he's not starting, and which the games he doesn't start are probably like some of the Carabao Cup. So, why do you want to put the whole weight of this big club on a 23 years old boy? Which is like uh, one huge thing. Like, so, he, he is going to get tired. Mind you, Saka, um, this is at the point we saw when he wanted to be forced to play for England this season. And that was somebody that was having injury. And remember, there have been like uh, so many um, conversations around, oh, he's been playing through the season with a whole lot of pains with him. So he's not been quiet. He's just been playing to what he, the, the capability he has right now. Because right, uh, Saka is one of the uh, persons that has been one, among like the top three most fouled players in the league. And then what do you want, want to say? He, they don't protect him that much. So... He also has pains. He's human, he has feelings, he has blood running through him. So, yeah, I think he's been playing to this to what he can deliver. So the question is, do we need to be playing Saka in all the games? I would say no. Like today, at the point when we're like at 70, 75, why not just take out Saka? Because we're already winning the game. Why not just take out Saka and let him rest and play someone else in that position? So that's sometimes like I think our, our man management also is a, is a problem. Next game against Nottingham Forest. Uh, before I let you go, next game against Nottingham Forest. Can we do the job there? Last season, Nottingham Forest were one of the teams that stopped us from winning the league. Nottingham Forest, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> can we do the job there? If we can put up the kind of performance we put up today, yes, because a whole lot of their players have travelled. Uh, and I maybe they'll be back for the game, who knows. But can we do the... Uh, Performance there, I think it depends on our strikers. Can they convert the chances? Mm -hmm. If they can, yes, we can do it. But if they're not, if they're going to expect, um, keep uh, waiting for corner kick, set piece to get goals, we may not be able to do that performance. Last one for me. Can you banter your friends who told you you're going to lose this game today at the Emirates? Yeah, big up to Emmanuel. <laughs> Onana at 50. <laughs> <laughs> He knows himself when he hears that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Of course, because we want to know Nana at 50. <laughs>